There were two men. Let's call them Bill and Ernie. They were the best of friends. They lived across each other in the cul-de-sac. They played cards every week. They went fishing and golfing together. They did cookouts. They were over at each other's home all the time. And as would happen, they died two days apart. And when the time came for St. Peter to open the gates of heaven to them, they both entered heaven at the same time. They strolled around and they were absolutely amazed at how wonderful heaven was, even beyond their wildest expectation, the peace, the tranquility, the love. And Bill turned to Ernie and said, just think, if our wives had not forced us to eat that oat bran all the time, we'd have been here 10 years sooner. <laughs> One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that among so many? On this 17th Sunday, in ordinary time, year B, we hear from the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Now, I know we've been working our way through the Gospel according to St. Mark, because this is year B. And we actually have arrived at which chapter 6 in Mark as well, the chapter that, in which he tells us his version of the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. But the church skips that version and today tells us the version told by St. John. After John tells us this familiar story, he offers us a sustained reflection on Jesus as the bread of life. And I think that's the reason why the church decided to use his version rather than Mark's. And we'll hear this bread of life discourse over the next four weeks at Sunday Masses. Now, it took Mahatma Gandhi to remind us Christians of one of the deepest understandings of the Eucharist. He spoke from a deep knowledge of the human spirit and from an equally deep understanding of famine and poverty when he reminded us that there are so many people hungry in the world that it was only fitting that God should come to us in the form of bread. This miracle is one of seven signs in the Gospel according to St. John, which tells us a little bit more about Jesus' true identity. And this story must have been one of the most favorite stories in the early Christian movement, because it's the only miracle outside the resurrection itself that is told in all four of the Gospels. John also tells us some things in his version of the story that did not appear in the Synoptic Gospels. In fact, he tells us three interesting facts, three pieces of information. First, that the loaves and the fishes come from a boy, a lad. Second, that the loaves are made of barley. And third, he tells us when this happens, in the springtime, around the feast of Passover. Now, what do these three additional pieces of information tell us? What can we learn from them? First, we can say that the boy is not rich in his carrying bag, his walking bag, which had been slung over his shoulder and was usually made out of wicker with the base wider than the top. It kind of had like a bottle top. You would carry all the things you needed along on your journey. And in this wicker basket, he's carrying these loaves and these fishes. And they aren't much, are they? The fish were not like trout as usually portrayed in Hollywood movies, or even in our church bulletin. When you go out, take a look at it. We see two big fish, 
and all these loaves that look like something you would buy at Kroger's. Well, scripture scholars tell us that was not probably like that at all. The fish were more like large sardines, and they were salted or pickled, and the loaves were more the size of a large hamburger roll, or I'm from Baltimore, I used to eat Kaiser rolls back there, particularly on our crab cakes and things like that. And it was about that size of a loaf. And the Greek word used that we translate as fish literally says food that is cooked to eat with bread. The loaves were not big. The fish were rather small. They were pickled just about the size of a large sardine. And they were made of barley. Barley was the coarsest ingredient that bread was made after. It was the poorest of the poorest staple in their diets. It had less calories and nutrition than wheat or rye or other grains. It also was the crop of the spring season when Passover is. Just like 50 days later at Pentecost, the crop would be wheat. Or again, in the early fall at tabernacles or booths, those are the three pilgrimage feasts, the crop was wine. So you can imagine which feast was the most popular of the three, where they went to get the new wine. But anyhow, getting back to the story, by the fact that the boy had barley in terms of the type of bread that he had, told us that he was a very poor person. He was poor. Now, what is the moral of this version of the story for us, particularly with those three pieces of information that John tells us that the others don't? We must be like that poor boy. We must have the kind of trust that he had there may be times in our lives when we feel very unworthy or feel like we don't have all that much to give, that what we have may be too meager. But little, you see, in Jesus' hands can become very, very much. If we put ourselves in Jesus' hands like that poor boy did with his meal, there's no telling what he can do with and through us. You see, we must trust in Jesus, that Jesus can do a miracle for us, just like he did for that poor boy 2,000 years ago.